God, in his infinite mercy, let me and the greatest strikeout artists of all time live to live in the same Ohio village. Everyone knew Bob Feller lived in a house hidden in the trees where Chagrin River Road turns up Brigham Hill. His home was like his pictures. Everyone knew where it was, they just couldn't see it. <laughs> in all the years he lived among us, we kids saw him only once. the intersection of County Line Road and south of, of Mayfield was Bordenero's, a produce store with a two-seater barber shop attached. In summer, you could see mounds of fuzzy sunset-colored peaches side by side with men lathered white as cauliflowers and then shaved hairless as honeydews. That's my favorite line. So please picture it. While our mother shopped for sardines and Ovaltine, that's not bad either, and you won't find it in T.S. Eliot. We kids daydreamed on the broad bleacher-like steps and look through the scaffolding below for lost treasure. Billy Bonnet found a blue and white Aggie there once. One day, when my brother Mike and my best friend Tama and Billy and me were kneeling on the planks with our heads under the scaffolding. We heard a thumping up to the barber shop. By the time our heads jerked up, the customer was past the swirly red and white pole and reclining in the big chair. Mr. Pirandello flung a pinstripe sheet over the man's body and slapped hot towels on the face we'd seen our whole lives on the Wheaties box. The face of a country boy who faced off swarms of grasshoppers, dust storms, and drought. Not awed by mere mortals. DiMaggio and Ted Williams were just so many insects to him. Bob Feller, Cleveland Indian, scourge of the Yankees, was there to save the crop. <laughs> Pirandello snipped, Feller sat as though posing for a statue, his sacred hair falling to the floor like mortal men. Surely not to be swept up and thrown away. The hair of rapid Robert, who hurled baseballs invisible to the naked eye. Pirandello whisked away the sheet. Feller uncoiled from the chair, thrust open the door, and suddenly towered above us, huddling on the stairs, afraid to move. Here, he said, something bright gleamed in his huge, strike-throwing hand. Look, this is for you. Hands out, please. We raised our palms like people in the Bible learning a new religion. A bit of paper, a whiff of aftershave. See you at the ballpark, he grinned his dimpled chin flashing. We were holding tickets to admit one to Cleveland Municipal Stadium, April 30th, 1946. The Yankees were coming to town.